Have you noticed that some people are getting much more adventurous when it comes to planning a vacation? Oh yeah. To these people, sunbathing at the beach, skiing in the mountains, fishing at the lake, or just hanging out, it's not fun enough. Well, there's a growing number of people that don't want to just be tourists. Well, they want to be eco-tourists. But that's the term given to travelers who want to explore plants, animals, and terrain, far from the luxuries of civilization. They venture out for more than just relaxation. They want education, too. And they found the best way to learn is to experience things hands-on. As you'll see in the following CNN report, the question is, does this hands-on approach help or hinder the ecosystems? For many, a boat trip down a remote jungle river is the adventure of a lifetime. Ron Reynolds and his family left the dry desert of their home in Las Vegas to experience the lush beauty of the Amazon rainforest. Just gorgeous, it really is. This is what I thought Brazil would be. This has been a totally different vacation than we've ever had before or probably ever will again. Characteristics of the leaves in the tropical forest. The Reynolds are eco-tourists. They and thousands of others have created a booming new industry in Brazil, one that caters to a different kind of tourist. People have already been to, to Spain or they have already seen the parks in the United States and they want, they want to know different areas and they want a different kind of experience. They don't just want to lie on the beach, people want to learn things. To learn about the rainforest, many tourists come to places like this, a remote jungle hotel built literally in the trees, hours away from civilization. Tourists who stay here experience the pleasure of direct contact with nature, and nature puts on quite a show. Ecological tourism is bringing millions of dollars to the Amazon. Hotels that range from the primitive to the luxurious have created thousands of new jobs. I wouldn't be working as a hotel maid if foreigners weren't interested in the forest, says Maria Oliveira. Indeed, ecotourism is giving Brazil economic return for preserving the Amazon. We're looking for ways to bring income, to generate jobs, to generate a better quality of life without having to touch the jungle. But there are those who say you can have too much of a good thing and that the rapid growth of ecotourism in Brazil's Amazon may end up destroying what it's supposed to preserve. If you disturb the wildlife, then you're actually going to change the ecosystem, the biodiversity within the Amazon. That's what we do not want to harm. Environmental officials in the Amazon say they're monitoring ecotourism carefully to ensure that doesn't happen. The hope is that unlike cattle ranchers or mining companies who destroy the forest for profit, the tourists who come here are concerned about nature and its preservation. Marina Mirabella, CNN, in the Amazon rainforest of Brazil. No matter what kind of tourist you are, it's hard to understand a people or a place in a short visit. This is especially true in a huge and varied country like Brazil. Well, an ecologist might dwell on the destruction of the rainforest, or an architect might admire the buildings of Rio de Janeiro, and a city planner might question the overcrowding and poor housing. Now, each may be an accurate observation, but it would not necessarily tell the whole truth. To really understand a place and its people, you need to look at the big picture. You need to see all the factors that interact to create the whole. This rain-swept hillside in southern Brazil has been taken over by a group of squatters. Moacir Campigoto and his family came here from the impoverished northeast, looking for a plot of land, a way to survive. I have no job and five children to feed, says Moacir. This land is our only chance. Though Brazil is the largest country in Latin America, with an abundance of arable land, most of it is owned by a wealthy few. The vast majority, a hundred million poor people, have virtually no access to it. The poor are forced to migrate in search of a place to make a living, and this is causing enormous problems. Perhaps the biggest problem is the impact on the environment. More than 10 million people have already moved into Brazil's Amazon rainforest, cutting, clearing, struggling to feed their families on land that quickly
quickly becomes infertile, forcing them to move on. We don't have the right to uh, say to someone that lives in this area that cutting down the forest and burning is destruction, because for them it is not destruction. That is the only alternative they have to survive, to raise a family, and to have some income. Millions more have looked to big cities for survival. 75% of Brazilians now live in urban areas. Cities like Rio and Sao Paulo are bursting at the seams. There are crowded shanty towns everywhere. In Rio, untreated sewage from the slums pours into the ocean. And the growing population is now threatening the city's urban rainforest, the largest in the world. Already, 20% of this subtropical jungle has been destroyed as poor people move in and cut trees to build their shacks. It's a social and environmental problem. If something isn't done soon, this forest will disappear. Many say the answer to Brazil's uncontrolled migration is land reform, making more of it available to the poor. From the point of view of human beings or from the point of view of the land, it is urgent to have a land reform in Brazil. It is something the Brazilian government has been promising for years, but so far little has been done. And so Moacir Campigoto and a million other squatters like him wait, hold protests and stage hunger strikes like this one to call attention to their plight. Their message is clear. Without land reform, they say, more and more people will be forced to move to where they can eke out a living, into the rainforest or into big cities. And that will mean more environmental degradation and urban misery. Marina Mirabella, CNN, Rio de Janeiro. For every action, there is a reaction. And Brazil is a perfect example of how economic problems are interwoven with social and environmental problems. Solutions will not be easy because each issue challenging the country cannot be isolated.